est abattu. Unissons-nous pour protéger les jeunes contre la manipulation des compagnies du tabac. Ça fait plus de 3 heures que tu fumes ce chicha, mais ma soeur qui es-tu Déjà 4 paquets de cigarettes que tu viens de finir, mais mon frère, que fous-tu Ou t'as pas, on l'a donné à JB, le tabac tu On le tourne en bas, ils sont allés, 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 ils sont Protéger les jeunes comme le tabac, apprenez aux jeunes comment se battre. Ils sont la venue de demain. Agua CC, un minier, le tabac détruit au Bolanier. Ils ont tous non à la drogue, ça nous conduit à la mort. Tu veux vivre en temps cesse de fumer, fumer. tu veux rester en force cesse de fumer. Hey. Apprends à refouler tes envies, elle est très précieuse ta vie. Tu fais, tu pars aux bandits, tu sais, c'est pas facile. Ensemble, luttons contre le tabagisme. Tabagisme, et je vous n'aime, et je vous n'aime, et je vous n'aime. My brother stop smoking, yeah. Tobacco killing, yeah. Make you know it's your life, oh. I said make you know it's your life, oh. Yeah. Too much killing, yeah. Every year eight million. Yeah. It's not too late for you. Think about your health, oh na na. Ne crois pas que c'est fini pour toi, non. Ne lâche pas si tu veux tu pourras, yeah. Ne t'abat tu, yeah. La nicotine tu, yeah. Ne crois pas que c'est fini pour toi, non. Ne lâche pas si tu veux tu pourras, yeah. Ne t'abat tu, yeah. La nicotine tu, oh na na. Et je vous n'aime, et vous n'aime, et je 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 vous n'aime. Ceci est un message de l'Alliance pour le contrôle du tabac en Afrique et ses partenaires. Today is May 25th. Each year on this day, Africans around the globe celebrate Africa Day. The day commemorates the founding of the first union of African countries in 1963. But Africa Day is also an, op an opportunity to reflect on the progress made by the African Union in achieving its goals, especially with regards uh, to protecting the human rights, the freedom, and the health of Africans. We wanted to use today's significance as an opportunity to not only celebrate our anniversary, but particularly on our continent of Africa, we, we want to acknowledge the greater progress, um, the unity, the success stories amongst African parties to fight for strong tobacco control policies, to protect the health of their people and next generations to come against the ravages caused by tobacco use. CTFK has partnered with many of these countries over the years, and we don't cease to, to see the growing capacity and the skills um, from governments and civil society organizations to tackle the tobacco industry and further push to advocate for strong policies. So we wanted to hear from them about the tobacco control journeys we have traveled together over the years. 
since our approach to advocacy is locally led and driven, we want to acknowledge the great contributions from many partners, tobacco control leaders, activists, dignitaries from different countries across the continent, many of whom are here with us today and from whom you'll hear. We will first uh, hear from them directly on their well wishes to CTFK. We'll then have a live panel discussion and then we'll finish off with more messages. So let's start with a few messages from Nigeria. We are honored to hear from two leading and distinguished figures in government who know tobacco control and they know tobacco industry ploys very well. The first message comes to us from Honorable Minister Professor Isaac Adewole, the immediate former Minister of Health, whose personal commitment to tobacco control was evident and palpable throughout his tenure. It's under his watch that Nigeria kickstarted the implementation of some low hanging fruits of the National Tobacco Control Act, rather than waiting for the long adoption process of the regulations uh, to be completed. And it was still under his leadership that the tobacco control regulations were passed in 2019, following four long years of intense pushback and delaying trips from the tobacco industry. We'll then hear from another important government stakeholder in Nigeria, Mr. Tunde Irukera. In 2008, Tunde was the lead government lawyer in a lawsuit against three multinational cigarette manufacturers, accusing them of trying to hook young Africans on tobacco in order to replenish a market that was declining in the West. Well, today, uh, Tunde is the executive vice chairman of the FCCPC, the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Council, one of the leading agencies responsible for the enforcement of the law and its regulations. And he continues to prioritize tobacco control and he continues to fight against the, the industry. Please, let's watch. It is my distinct honor and pleasure to say a few words as part of the celebration of the 25th anniversary of CTFK and its superb contribution to tobacco control globally. As former Minister of Health in Nigeria, I will restrict myself to CTFK's activity in Nigeria and the measurable support that I received as Minister from CTFK during my tenure as the Minister of Health. CTFK happened to be a major player in the Nigerian tobacco control community and played a tremendous role in supporting technical activities at the ministry and hence at the national level. I want to pay tremendous tribute to Ida Ochefu, who actually led this support in Nigeria. As soon as I came into office in 2015, they came to my office and we had a chat. And it was not too difficult for us to realize that we shared many things in common. I happen to be a strong anti-tobacco advocate. And therefore, we had many things in common and we formed an alliance. We put to work efforts to implement the content of the National Tobacco Control Act 2015. We thereafter put to work the National Tobacco Control Committee, NATOC, with their support. I also want to appreciate CTFK for supporting us in the submission of two major memoranda to the Federal Executive Council. One is a memorandum to ratify the protocol to eliminate illicit tobacco products, which was presented on 23rd of May 2018, as well as the memorandum on the National Tobacco Control Regulations, which was presented on 13th of June 2018. It is also important that through the IFOC, they monitored activities going on, uh, not only 
uh, by the tobacco industry, but also ensuring that uh, we work effectively with the National Assembly. They also supported by providing technical assistance to the Nigerian delegation that participated in the eighth conference of parties to the WHO Framework Convention on Tobacco Control. I must say that our relationship was extremely beneficial and proactively supportive, positive yielding, and generated a lot of positive outcomes. And it is to my delight that Nigeria can proudly showcase this. We are one of the few countries in the world that actually demonstrates clearly the harmful effect of tobacco. And we've been able to do this with support from CTFK. This celebration would not be complete if we do not really celebrate the landmark achievement of CTFK in Nigeria. And whatever we've achieved in the field of tobacco control in Nigeria would not have been possible without the active support of CTFK, ably led in Nigeria by Ms. Ilda Ochef. Speaking about CTFK, for me, it's uh, what an emotional thing and uh, inspirational opportunity. I uh, came to know and start working with CTFK sometime in 2007. At that time, I was a litigator I was representing several states in Nigeria and the federal government in cost recovery and uh, um, other types of litigation against the tobacco industry. And CTRK was absolutely extremely supportive, not just from uh, supporting some of the tobacco control initiatives, especially from an advocacy standpoint, but generally from providing perspective and strategy and uh, what the experiences have been in other parts of the world and the United States and what had worked and worked very well. And that was so critical literally provided support and uh, boots on the ground for supporting the entire litigation process from an advocacy standpoint, both during litigation outside of it and training. And the work of CTFK is uh, very, very primary in raising the profile of tobacco control in Nigeria. And CTFK has stayed actively in Nigeria since then. I must say that the role CTFK played is so critical to Nigeria ultimately uh, enacting the National Tobacco Control Act. And even uh, after the law was made, ultimately getting the implementing regulations, that says in very large part on account of the work uh, CTFK has done in Nigeria. And so whether it's advocacy, whether it's knowledge sharing, whether it's active support, engagement, and then uh, strategic support and uh, training and capacity building, in all these uh, spaces and more, CTFK has been a vital partner in the entire value chain. CTFK continues to engage in advocacy that supports the right taxation methodology and uh, provide uh, countervailing uh, and more balanced information against what the industry uh, provides uh, in trying to navigate engagement with government. Uh, congratulate CTFK uh, for all these years uh, on, on such a milestone. I uh, certainly look forward to working with them more. And I'm pretty certain that with their continued support, uh, Nigeria will be one of their greater success stories. Thank you very much. Great messages. We thank both Professor Adewale and Mr. Iwukera for their incredible determination and courage against the tobacco giants in their country, which was never an easy feat. It's never an easy feat anywhere, but also for their welcoming collaboration with civil society to see this through. Um, we feel incredibly honored and lucky to have had them on, on the right side of, of, of this mission. Um, now let's turn our attention to voices from civil society partners in South Africa, Zambia and Botswana. Let's watch. The 
through these campaigns, I must say that the good news is that as of April this year, or early March this year, the government of Botswana um, publicized the long awaited FCTC compliant legislation. Um, it went onto the government gazette. And once the law goes through that stage, we know that then that law um, is going to go into the next parliamentary sitting for debate. I mean, this is undeniable that this is the one time that we can speak loudly on how, on the impact of tobacco use and COVID-19 based on current research. Over the past four years, we've been pushing and advocating for the tobacco control bill to be finalized. And CTFK has played a significant role in supporting our advocacy actions and in providing legal assistance through the ILC. Happy 25th anniversary, CTFK. Wish you hundreds more. Campaign for Tobacco Free Kids uh, came in to give us uh, very much needed advice on how to go about uh, this uh, advocacy uh, plan, so to say. And from them, we have actually built capacity in political mapping. We have built capacity in uh, uh, media engagement. We have gained capacity in uh, engagement of policymakers. And uh, I think for the first time, the entire Zambian parliament has been reached out uh, with messages about tobacco and the harms of, to of tobacco on people's health. And I think we are now very ready for the parliamentarians to debate the tobacco control bill in Zambia from a very, very informed sphere. Thank you very much, Campaign for Tobacco Free Kids. And long live. We expect that you know, in the next 25 years, you, you achieve much more that has, has been achieved in the 25 years gone by. All the best. And really, we need to reach out together. We are with you and we appreciate your input into our, uh, into our fight. Thank you. Reach out together. Thank you. Thank you so much for all those words, everyone. Um, at CTFK, we couldn't do all this work without your untiring energy and, and winning attitude to keep pushing for more, always with a smile. Uh, that's part of the winning combination amidst the, the challenges we all know you face daily in your advocacy work. So we appreciate your words of, uh, of support to us. Now, um, let me introduce our next session. We have called on a few of our partners to help us lead um, an intergenerational conversation about continuing the fight for tobacco-free future in Africa. Yes, we do dare to believe it is possible to become a tobacco-free continent. Our continent is unique because of how strongly we know the industry has had its eyes on it. So it's important to talk about where we're coming from, where we are today and how we'll continue to collaborate and fight for sustainability of our combined efforts to date. Um, it's been a very long road and we in tobacco control know there is still much to accomplish. What I want to do is talk about tobacco controls yesterday, today, and the possibilities for tomorrow in Africa. And to help me with that, we have a panel consisting of tobacco control advocates in the civil society space. We have veterans and emerging leaders and mentors in the community. I will call each of our panelists by name first. Celine Awar from Kenya is the chief executive officer of the International Institute for Legislative Affairs a not-for-profit organization in Kenya, working on policy and legislative issues in various thematic areas, including public health. Hi, Celine. Good to see you. Hi, thank you. And uh, Saneli Zulu, you are the chief convener of the South African Tobacco-Free Youth Forum, an organization you created to mobilize fearless and passionate youth to raise their voices against the vicious tactics of the tobacco industry and to ask the South African government to enact a strong law. Welcome, Sanele. Good afternoon, everyone, and good afternoon, Bintu. As young people will say nothing for us without us. You got it. 
Uh, we have Bode Oluwafemi, a 20 year plus, 20 plus year long advocate and a long-term partner of CTFK who is constantly and publicly calling out government to, to its obligations. Um, you are the executive director of the Corporate Accountability and Public Participation Africa, CAPA, in Nigeria. You are also the president of the board of ATCA, the African Tobacco Control Alliance. Hi, Bode. Hi, everyone. Happy African Day. You got it. And last but certainly not least, um, a fierce giant and veteran, or as we say back home, doyen of tobacco control, a world-renowned oncologist, the Dr. Abdulaziz Kasey, uh, the tobacco industry's biggest fear in Senegal. Bienvenue, Dr. Merci beaucoup et bonjour à tout le monde. Bonjour, Dr. So, uh, unfortunately, um, our fifth panel panelist, Janaba Batili, who was to be with us today, had a personal emergency this morning, so she had to excuse herself, and we hope she's fine. So let me go straight into it. The, the first question is for our two veterans here, Bode and Dr. Cafe. Um, CTFK may be 25 today, but our direct support for tobacco control in Africa started about 14 years ago. For those of us who were not in tobacco control back then, can you give us a brief picture, brief picture of what the tobacco control landscape and climate looked like before the intervention of CTFK and other partners under the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation initiative? Uh, Bude, can you describe it briefly as you remember it? Thanks very much, Bintu. Um, well, for me, let me start from the country I operate from, which is Nigeria. Uh, what I could say is that Nigeria, as at that time, was like a killing field for tobacco companies. But unfortunately, no one was even counting the body bags. Uh, the tobacco industry was just having a full day, and no one was paying attention. Nobody was thinking about what to do. Um, at that point, we started tobacco control. The Nigerian government was actually celebrating what they call their biggest investment uh, uh, into Nigeria, which was a British American tobacco company, you know, citing possibly the largest tobacco manufacturing plant in Ibadan, in southwestern Nigeria. And so when the government goes around almost fortnightly hosting executives of uh, BAT, uh, BAT paid uh, government officials on trips to South Africa, onto other parts of the world, uh, was even holding meetings with the Ministry of Health. And to cap it all was that even our president had to fly, you know, from Nigeria, leaving 180 or 200 million plus people to London to go and shake hands uh, with brand tobacco executives. It was in a time uh, tobacco control laws was on the card of the government. We knew we were to just losing, we're losing you, Bude. Capacity take up the giant, which was what the gates intervention in Nigeria. Sorry, we seem to have lost you there, Bude. Can you hear me? Okay, we'll, we'll come back to you, Bude. Um, it was quite interesting, though. Um, Dr. Kase, I could see you think through, trying to remember back then. Do you, do you, do you recall the fame? Thank you. July 1975, I was a young 17-years-old tobacco control activist in my hometown of Tambacunda, 500 kilometers from Dakar. Since then, a lot of individual actions by civil society organizations were disparate, unplanned, unorganized. 
the successive governments were rather very accommodating with the tobacco industry. Former president of Senegal, Leopold Sedar Senko. When he left in the early 80s, left a very strong legislation, but subtly, tobacco industry deconstructed in five years all of these legislations and regulations. I was sent to France for years and I came back in 1994 after high level training in France. But how lonely to handle concepts that only two of us understood in this country called Senegal. It was very interesting and important. We got support from CTFK and we'll talk about later of all of these points we made mm -hmm. after my coming back home. Mm. Dr. Cathy, what was your training in in France? You were mentioning that, tobacco I was trained in France on tobacco control in 1991, from 1991 to 1993. But my uh, uh, high level training was in 1993 in France at the University of Paris with a lot of other people working on tobacco control. And I want to talk about Professor Molimar and a lot of other professors in Paris. Gotcha. Thank you, yeah. Dr. Cafe. But then we had just left you there in a, uh, for a second. Did you want to finish um, the, the landscape you were in a, few, a, a long time ago before we came in? Okay, so I don't know where I was lost, but I was. You were talking about presidents flying, you know, flying around with the sure. tobacco industry. Exactly. So we we had our president then, Olusegun Obasanjo, had to fly to London just for a photo opportunity with um, the MD of British American Tobacco then to show Nigerians that yes, we brought this gigantic corporation into the country. There were about three hundred and fifty B boards around Nigeria celebrating that giant feat. And uh, they were hosting them, the executives, every uh, almost fortnightly, twice a month at the state house, then uh, to, to showcase the, the, the volume of investment, quote and unquote, they were bringing to Nigeria. And um, I could remember that that wasn't like the funnest, the, the, the easiest time to talk about tobacco control, mm -hmm. because you are seeing them as the enemy, direct enemy of the government. I could remember that I was on national TV. Spoken up, speaking about dangers of smoking on a live TV program. Oh no. We all wanted to hear that. Sorry, Bode, the bad connection. I will get back to that because I want to hear what happened. Um, Dr. Cafe, I'm going to um, uh, ask you this next question. So that was about 15, you, you talked about 1993, you went back as far as that. How do you compare the civil society capacity and the political will of government for tobacco control then and the ones we have today since the start of your partnership with CTFK and other partners? And as you respond, we'd love to hear about one of your most defining moments in your tobacco control journey. Let's start with you. When I came back home, friends, we created what we call the Prevenir Association. We wanted to include- Which means control. prevent, right? Association prevent. Prevent. We wanted to include tobacco control in the prevention of NCDs, including cancer, because I'm a cancer specialist. But CDFK introduced something very important. And I say, it, they played a game 
changing role by continuously, continuously, which is important, supporting us in a lot of different points. One was creating and maintaining the tobacco control coalition by bringing together all the tobacco control associations in a coalition with just one specific aim, mm. pass a strong law compliant to FCTC treaty. We made it. Second point, all of these persons benefited from capacity building. Many of them were tobacco control civil society associations, ministry officials, parliamentarians, and a lot of other people. We finally use all of this knowledge to advocate for governmental policy change with the ultimate, ultimate goal of passing a strong law. Mm. By the same time, we use a lot of energy with CDFK, raising awareness for behavioral change. These two points are very important. Policy change, behavioral change. We drafted a law. That law we drafted, we shared it with all the parliamentarians. And I still have the memory of having with Joshua, with Sophie, with a lot of other people from the Africa team training in one week in Tubab Jalal or the 150 MPs who had Mem members of parliament, mm -hmm. all the members of parliament who had to vote for the law. A lot of emotions. A lot of emotions the day before the vote for the permanent interaction with Monique Mugli, Monique from CDFK. One day, we have spent the whole night working with Mustafa Jahate. Mustafa Jahate to clinic Le Mamel in an emergency situation. And on the day of the law, live with Africa team, the, the members of parliament recited like a litany all the argument to vote for the tobacco control law, article by articles and unanimously. Mm. A lot of emotion, but Mam Bayam John, mm. she passed away. Yeah. He's crying. Mm -hmm. Wanted to push the Minister of Health. Not to stop one of the most important point, protect non-smoking people. Mm. The mission was accomplished yeah. the day one. I remember. Asanya, Alphonse Chow, Omar Lau of the Ministry of Health, we managed the issue implementing decrease. That, that was a whole mission. other story too, right? <laughs> that was a whole yeah. other story and it took some yeah. time. Thank you, Dr. Thank Cathay. Thanks. Thank you. I can hear the passion and I, I can hear uh, it was a really tough fight. And I remember um, that day, like you mentioned, you know, a, a bunch of us at CTFK were sitting in a conference room and following every single step that you all, were all going through with the, at the parliament at uh, that time. And we all cheered when we heard the news that it was finally passed. So that was a great achievement. Uh, thank you, Dr. Cathy. But did you wanna take a few seconds to tell us what happened when you were in media and then just a few seconds. And then I wanna ask you the same question about uh, that I just asked Dr. Cathy, which is, um, you know, um, 
how do you feel the capacity changed in um, in Nigeria once you we started partnering together? Uh, but also, if you can give um, an example of the, of the most um, uh, the biggest moment you remember in your journey for tobacco control, and uh, and then we'll move on to the next question. You're on mute. Thanks, me too, and I'll be very fast before the connection messes up again. You know, what I was saying, I painted the scenario of the context then, but was that we were very clear that what we needed was a national law, comprehensive law to tackle about control in Nigeria. But we, we then lacked the capacity, the resources, in fact, the coalition to, to make that happen. And so when the CTP intervention came, that was what it helped us to resolve you know, to be able to organize, to be able to bring people together, to be able to produce materials, and even to be able to sit down with parliamentarians, policymakers that needed to consider this, and of course, conduct uh, media advocacy, which was very essential. Let me say this, media advocacy was very important because even before we got the laws passed, we were already recording outcomes in Nigeria. The 350 billboards that I mentioned before went down even before the laws were passed because we were making incredible noise in Nigeria. And more there are so many memorable moments uh, uh, been to. And of course- yeah, that's, yeah, that's the biggest one. Well, I, I don't know which one was the biggest one, but when the law was finally passed the second time, you know, Nigerian law was passed and it disappeared. <laughs> and then, May 27 was the last sitting at the parliament. For Christ's sake, I didn't, I was, I, I don't know whether I was standing or I, I don't know whether I was a human being. All I knew was I was in the room and we got into parliament, Nigeria with our many difficulties, the principal officers of the parliament decided to wear a ladies wrapper, we call it in Nigeria, into parliament. And that was the last session all right, we had just three hours in this world, or else we'll start all over again. Guess what? They started a big debate about whether the man should be admitted in parliament. Was he wearing a female shirt or a woman's shirt? And we were like, come on, you guys are representing 200 million people. Can you just get to the business of the day? Then there were motions, counter motions, whether they should go and check whether it's a man or a woman. Oh and my was, goodness. Oh, now uh, I'm just going to fall down and collapse and die. <laughs> and then there was commotion. And in less than 10 minutes of moments of orderliness, the bill was tabled. Nobody, because of the chaos in the morning, nobody could even rise up against the race objection. And the gavel went, bam, it is passed. Been to, I didn't know whether I was dreaming, whether this was the reality. We were walking, I mean, just two days ago, I saw the pictures of us walking out of parliament, but I, I just think it took me like three hours to absorb to realize it. what actually happened. Wow. I can't forget that day. Thanks really. for sharing. I, I don't think I'll ever forget that. Um, <laughs> and uh, so thanks for sharing that. And I also remember in Nigeria, for me, one of the most defining, more, more recent one is, the, the, the youth campaign uh, on social media that you conducted for the, the regulations was also um, amazing, incredibly, very sharp uh, and very important to the success of that campaign. Um, yeah. And um, that actually leads me into, the, uh, into my next question and this time to um, Fanele, um, uh, who, um, uh, who's our partner in, in South Africa and uh, who's doing really good work um, with his group there. Uh, Sanele, let me turn to you. Can you unmute yourself for a second? Um, uh, Sanele, you, you describe yourself as a young person on a mission to achieve a smoke-free generation in South Africa. Um, can, you, can you tell us briefly um, a little bit more about your background and, and why you got hooked to tobacco control, right? How, why you got hooked to tobacco control and how, since you joined that fight, you are honing your advocacy skill uh, for what we know is a very, very tough policy change campaign, as you heard uh, the, the, your two panelists uh, describe it for, for their, for their, in their journey. 
Yeah, no, uh, thank you so much, uh, Bintu. I think uh, once again, I'm excited to be part of the platform uh, representing um, young, revo young lions and revolutionaries um, in the space of tobacco control in South Africa. You know, Bintu, there's, um, there's a quote that, or rather a statement you said about the theme, which is yesterday, today, tomorrow. And I think I would like to open with the remarks that I came up with a quote that says, if you do not understand, or if you do not know yesterday, you will never understand today. And if you don't understand today, you cannot prepare for the tomorrow. And I think for us as young people, it's quite critical and crucial to understand as to where do we come from? And I think my background really is around the green economy, climate change, uh, the environment, you know, and that's the, the passion that uh, over the years one has had to say, how do we protect our environment? How do we protect our young people? Um, and how do we basically inculcate the spirit of um, ownership of the environment amongst our young people? Uh, but ever since we were introduced to tobacco control, um, one was wondering how do they link together, you know, tobacco control and uh, the environment or climate change. And to our surprise this year, uh, World Not Tobacco Day is actually uh, putting their theme towards a climate, you know, the environment. And we're really excited because even our constituent is on the ground was finally understanding as to why all of a sudden we, we introduced the topic of tobacco control. And I must tell you, Bintu, that um, climate change has been of interest to many of our young people in South Africa. It makes sense because it's been a conversation on the ground. You know, it's been a conversation on the ground. However, tobacco control was totally a new uh, topic. You know, um, so much so that even when we speak to young people, the moment you say tobacco control, they start asking you, what are you talking about? They hold on to the first word, which is tobacco. But then uh, we have to explain what the control is about. Mm. Um, so I think then it's, it's an introduction that we, we introduce them to now to say it also then relates to climate change. It, it relates to the environment as well. So, so yeah, we're quite excited as well about that. Thank you, Sanelli. That is so well said um, and food for thought for all of us. Um, I wanna use um, the um, communication lens that uh, I think we were talking about just a little bit earlier to segue into another important facet of advocacy campaigns, the role of communication and mass media. Bude, uh, you're also a media professional as a former journalist. So let me come back to you with this question. Um, I, I wanna quote you, uh, you said to me once, uh, good smart advocates around the world um, know that any policy advocacy cannot exist and will not succeed without communications in, in, in media sav savviness. Uh, I know your team has worked many times with CTFK um, to build communication advocacy campaigns to move the needle, the needle forward. So I have two brief questions for you, brief answers, please. Uh, what's been your experience with the power of communication um, campaigns for tobacco control, especially when responding to the industry. Um, and the second one is, can you share with us how advocates have worked together to keep tobacco control alive in the midst of the COVID crisis and any other crisis? Pinto, I'll be very brief. Advocacy works. Even when we were pushing policy, People in government do not want to be publicly challenged. So they were selling to the public, a corporation that has come to do good. We've got to flip it to say, look, this is exactly what this corporation represents. And again, come back to convince them to know what that corporation truly represents so that they can move the policy that we wanted them to move. Mm. That's what communication is all about. We co we we connecting the policy makers with the people and then the public good, which is what government also is. I mean, is set up to do. The government is to protect us, the less powerful, from the extremely powerful and exploitative and killing corporations that are against our public health. The only, the easiest way to bridge that gap and, and tilt their hand is by power of communication. So we use diverse communication. You know, we use traditional, we use innovative form communication. At the point we are mobilizing the youth, we move to Africa's pop culture. 
you know let's talk to them in the language that our people organize let's mobilize our youths so we did the rap tz rap challenge of which you have a video exactly what we then moved to the covid era where everything has gone virtual all right so mm. we did more of virtual engagement lot of digital media there is a lot of opportunity the youths are read the twitter space facebook live you know we explore all of this and most importantly one thing i would like to say this afternoon is that with this digital media you find it so easy even to recruit the youths into your campaign all you need to do is to create one interesting challenge and you see a lot of them who wants to be part of the challenge and asking you question I mean, we have a skills challenge going on. I just got a message from the drama department of a university to say, look, the entire department wants to be part of this. How do we send us the flyer? We want our students to be part of this. So this is what we have engaged. And in Nigeria, we work as a team. You know, we have Kappa, we have uh, Gatefield Foundation, we have the NTCA. All of us pull our volunteers, our, all our teams together each time to push via the digital media. And I can tell you, it's extremely powerful and it's helping in this country, Nigeria. That's so great to hear. That's what a coalition should do. But it also uh, reminds me of what Fenele was saying about information, lack of information and misinformation. Uh, so so Fenele, you were, uh, Fenele, you were absolutely right on that point. And I think uh, Bude gave a really good um, justification and reason uh, for that. I want to move to the only lady on this panel. Sorry, Celine, you were not supposed to be. Uh, but well, I am one too, right? <laughs> so I'm here with you. Yeah. Uh, but Celine, I'm leaving this last question. Uh, it's a really critical one uh, for you. Um, you are an expert you know, on tobacco taxation. Uh, you've been part of a winning team that has been advocating successfully for tax increases over the past few years, not without challenges though. Uh, but you've also heard and seen the progress made at the global level for stronger policies um, and how those have emerged into lasting policies in some places. Um, what do you think are, are the necessary immediate steps to advance and sustain tobacco control efforts and continue the momentum in Africa? Thank you, Bintu. Uh, before I um, jump into that, I know you didn't ask me about a uh, defining moment. Maybe I can take a few seconds to sure. uh, yeah, share that. So, um, the question, apart from the, uh, you know, winning the fight um, um, in court of the regulations uh, in 2019 to passage of the ITP ratification by Kenya in 2020, I think one um, very defining moment uh, for Ireland in partnership with CTFK um, was the passage of the excise duty in 2015, um, which um, was groundbreaking because um, that marked the very first time uh, that we had um, simplification of a uh, tax structure. And apart from that, there was a, a, an increase more than double of the rate at that time, which uh, moved from uh, 1,200 Kenya shillings per meal, that's about um, uh, $12 to 2,500 shillings uh, uh, per meal across all cigarettes. Now, this was critical because um, um, ILA was able to work very well with um, a group of, you know, uh, stakeholders in, in, in the country, as well as uh, with technical expertise um, across the continent uh, to just uh, provide a very strong case why uh, tax uh, structure needed to be harmonized. And um, this also marked the you know, beginning of a, of a long journey that we have seen progressive increase um, in uh, the taxes. So as we speak today, Bintu, um, that rate has increased by up to 53% as of uh, this year's budget, uh, from that 2,500 per meal to um, 3,800 uh, for, unfortunately, uh, two tiers for the filter of cigarette and uh, by about 10% uh, cumulatively over the past seven years for plain cigarettes. So this um, um, has, you know, really built the institutional capacity of ILA and expertise in uh, tobacco taxation. And uh, we continue seeing, uh, you know, um, even though with challenges, as you say, we've had some losses along the way, but it is, it is a good journey and you're looking forward to uh, working this together as we proceed. Now, moving on to your question about um, 
uh, the next steps, uh, particularly in regards to having strong and more sustainable policies in um, uh, for taxation, particularly uh, to support uh, tobacco control programming. Um, whereas there have been those you know, discussions around earmarking of tobacco taxes uh, so that they can go directly to support tobacco uh, control programming, which we have not uh, been able to do in the country. But then uh, our focus then uh, you know, has been around um, using the provision we have in the National Act uh, that is establishing a tobacco control fund that then provides um, domestic resources for supporting tobacco control interventions by both government and non-government uh, um, stakeholders. And this is critical for sustainability because then uh, we need to have you know, um, a stronger um, and, and more robust um, resource base, of course, you know, even beyond uh, finances, to be able to um, continue um, and implement our tobacco control uh, policy and legislation. So uh, that is, is, is one thing that uh, as Kenya, we are uh, really pushing forward uh, to have this realized. We have seen it work in other countries and uh, we, we, we hope that you know Kenya having this uh, would also be an inspiration uh, to other countries in the region to also you know consider uh, that channel for uh, mobilizing domestic resources for tobacco control uh, programming. That was a, a really good summary, um, Celine, and I think a lot of us will agree uh, with the key points that you raised. Um, and um, there's so much more to say. There's, there's such great opportunities for all of us to be sitting at one table and talk about um, the, the, the different wins in other countries, how, how it was done, uh, why it's not working in some of our countries in Africa, and um, uh, why um, uh, it's critical that we really do look at that, uh, um, that, that angle for the, 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 the strengthening of tobacco control uh, programs um, in, in our country. Sanele, you have a question and then we'll close. I think, I think just to add um, on to what Celine was also saying, I think, uh, you know, as a, as a youth group or as a youth group in South Africa, we've also learned quite a lot of things from the technical support we received on the ground from Zanele and Belinda and them. But one of the crucial things that I must also mention being to, uh, to, to our colleagues is that we've also realized that mentorship, you know, is quite, is one of the key pillars in ensuring that young people actually take up uh, this topic of tobacco control because you must remember that you can create awareness campaigns but if you don't guide them if you don't mentor them if you don't hold their hands and coach them you know it's as good as you know creating an event for a day they get excited they leave again so i think um, we've had um, sessions with our ambassadors because one of the things that i'm going to challenge people as well on this platform is to say we must really really one find mentors with in the space of tobacco control. Two, we must create some form of ambassadors where we recruit um, young people and they must become ambassadors. And in South Africa, we're doing that quite well with all our four provinces that we have presence in. And then the last one being to is that I feel that as young people, we really need to go on an evangelistic approach where we really, really go and evangelize about tobacco control. Because I can tell you now that uh, the industry um, uh, is trying to recruit young people all the time and they come up with new information. You know, so therefore that means the information of yesterday, the information of the past is no longer relevant to the young people of today because the industry is coming up with new innovative ways. So I think this mentorship thing that I'm talking about would really assist in terms of coming up with innovative ways of ensuring that our young people remain up to date. They unlearn, you know, what they were taught back then so that they can learn new information. So I really wanted just to add that onto what uh, Selena was also saying. No, I love that you close that you're closing with that comment, uh, Fanelli, and and I think we are we're all really focused on every single word that you that you uttered here. I could see the two veterans here on our panel just agreeing because I've heard Dr. Kase say this many, many, many times. He said, "What do I leave behind?" <laughs> you know, we need the youth to take over, uh, and we need to train them. We need to mentor them. They are taking on the mantle. Uh, Bude has said that himself many, many times, and he's been such a great mentor also to uh, to many uh, you know upcoming leaders of tobacco control. So thank you for adding that. We hear you loud and clear, and we totally agree. Um, I think I'm, I, I, 
I'm going to have to close it. We've heard from all of you that key elements to, to continue strengthening our common cause are, um, I heard widening the community to not just limit ourselves to health-minded organizations. Uh, we've talked about empowering the youth to build a, a demanding uh, presence in front of the public and policymakers to create that legacy. Uh, we've talked about adopting strong and in innovative financing mechanisms that would ensure a solid structure today to safeguard efforts and further achievements in the long run. And I shouldn't forget um, measuring and evaluating the impact of the law. That, uh, that was Dr. Cassie's point um, on behavioral change and disease burden. Okay, so um, unfortunately, we don't have time for questions, but we will take every single question that came on in the, in the chat. We promise you that, and we will answer them individually by people who had um, asked them. Um, we've uh, gotten to the end of this panel discussion, um, and um, I will close this session with a really brief summary. Uh, folks, you have heard about the yesterday, the today, and the tomorrow for tobacco control in Africa. But I hope that uh, you also felt the continued passion uh, to continue this fight. Um, our collective end goal is to help create a smoke-free generation in Africa, one where smoke-free restaurants are the norm. Um, so to my distinguished panelists, I say, the success in tobacco control in the region would not have been possible without your courage. Um, your commitment and determination, um, and without your willingness to be strategic and creative and, and, and be bold, which uh, has helped and continues to help create and replicate models of, um, of winning campaigns across the continent, and not necessarily just for tobacco controls, but those could be applicable to other uh, matters. So thanks a million for sharing your thoughts. I applaud you. Thank you so much for your time and, and your input. So um, colleagues and guests, uh, let's go back to hearing more messages from CTFK, uh, from CTFK's partners around Africa about their partnerships with us and, and what they remember as their most defining moments. Let's take a listen. Strong partnership, strong collaboration, and uh, um, very strong advocacy um, and speaking of the same language. So we had a common agenda to, to, to protect the Ethiopian public from the deadly effects of tobacco. So we were speaking the same language. So speaking the same language, very strong collaboration, very strong partnership and very strong advocacy has led our journey to a success. So has led um, the industry has led us to uh, really resist and counter the industry setback, the industry interference. So that's my very short uh, message in terms of our journey. Across several tobacco control campaigns, we have always harnessed the power of youth as campaigners, as influencers and voices for change. With CTFK's assistance, we have advanced tobacco control narratives through social media, creative storytelling and influencers to advance policy and behavior changes. For, for Kenya, um, getting the Tobacco Control Act in place in 2007 was a big statement and it was, you know, the beginning of, um, actually it was the, the culmination of a long battle and a long journey that the country and the, the key individuals at you know, the CSO level or ministry went over that time um, had gone through to reach to that point where the, 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 the legislation was enacted. There is more and more information also emerging because the major threat we are having now is uh, this uh, emergency of uh, a new product by the tobacco industry and the government seem to be buying into that, especially in Kenya. But I believe that uh, if we continue talking and we continue engaging even uh, WHO, and the other players, we continue uh, working as a region together with the uh, rather led by ATCA and other uh, organizations in the country, then that way we are going to succeed. Our social media campaigns have continued to mobilize youth and positively change their perception on smoking and to rally their support for tobacco control policies. We absolutely believe that a smoke free generation is possible. When the judgment was finally given in November 2019, after it having been postponed, I think twice or thrice, 
it was it was just amazing it was i was not there myself at the court at that time we were out of uh, nairobi out in the in the field but it was a huge moment and uh, i can just imagine for those who are in the courtroom that very particular moment ne wando bakala wanda mariam ibalal ya macho sonde education society one as that was i mean ctf ken enkwan le 25 nya met ባላቹ አደረሳችሁ ላለው ኢትዮጵያ ውስጥ ብቻ ሳይሆን አፍሪካ ውስጥ ጥምባሆን ለመቆጣጠር እና ለመከላከል ያለ የሚደረገው ጥረት ውስጥ ተፈተኛ ስራ ተሰሩ ቆይታችኋል በዚህ ልክ ኮር ይገባል እኛ ብቻ ሳይሆን በብዙ ቦታዎች ላይ እየሰራችሁ ስራ ከፍተኛ ውጤት እየመጣ ነው ያለው ካሁን በኋላም ደግሞ አብረን ተባብረን ሰርተን እንችን ምርጥ የሆነች አገርና አህጉር ከተባ ሆነ ጻር ገን ሰዎች በሰላም በጥሩ ሁኔታ ምኖርባት ምቹ የመኖሪያና የሥራ ቦታ እንደምንዳደር ተስፋደርጋለሁ መልካሙን ሁሉ ምን ይላልካለሁ መልካሙን ሁሉ ያጋጥማችሁ ጸልያለሁ አመሰግናለሁ CTFK support to ATCA has helped to establish the alliance as a tobacco control communication hub in Africa the flexibility of the campaigns web procedures the very friendly working atmosphere has guaranteed a heat-free collaboration between the two entities. Lessons learned from the ATCA CTFK collaboration have been exploited to further improve tobacco control civil society coordination in Africa. The campaign for tobacco free kids investments in Africa have greatly contributed to advancing the implementation of the World Health Organization framework convention on tobacco control in the continent being the lead organization that coordinates africa's tobacco control civil society interventions atca can attest to the very significant progress that has occurred in countries that benefited from ctfk support from the high level stakeholder engagement to effective communication and digital advocacy the campaign has through atca played a significant role in ensuring that tobacco industry tactics are exposed, denounced, countered and isolated and governments take measures to protect the population from the devastating effects of tobacco. Bonjour, je suis euh, Dr. Flor Ndembi Mbé. Euh, je suis présidente de la coalition camerounaise contre le tabac et euh, j'ai occupé aussi euh, le poste de présidente du conseil d'administration de l'alliance pour le contrôle du tabac en Afrique. Euh, CTFK est un partenaire majeur de la lutte anti-tabac au Cameroun. Parce que c'est grâce à CTFK que nous avons eu euh, des formations sur le tabac et ses méfaits. Nous avons pu également mener plusieurs activités de plaidoyer et euh, nous avons aussi bénéficié de financement pour plusieurs projets importants. Euh, dans celui du plaidoyer pour la lutte la loi anti tabac euh, ainsi que d'autres textes avec des résultats majeurs je voudrais ici citer tout simplement euh, le texte sur le marquage sanitaire graphique donc c'est avec un très grand plaisir que euh, je souhaite un joyeux anniversaire à CTFK félicitations pour ces 25 ans de succès parce que comme on dit dans mon pays 25 ans c'est pas 25 jours Nous souhaitons à CTFK plein succès pour l'avenir afin que euh, nos enfants soient protégés des méfaits du tabac. On this special occasion, we wish a very happy anniversary to CTFK and thank you for, for continuously supporting tobacco control interventions in Africa. We love our partners. Thank you so much. Thank you for the wonderful, the wonderful messages and wishes. Um, um, now let's go back live. Uh, I just want to say really quickly that it, uh, we might run about five minutes uh, late uh, because we want to hear uh, uh, the, the we have a, a final video for you at the end. Uh, but uh, let's go quickly through this um, uh, last session. And uh, we thank you for your patience. So let's go back live. We have a few of our Gates partners who have been standing by to say a few words about our partnership collaboration and our approach to advocacy in Africa. 
Um, I want to give the floor to Leon Sissou, the Executive Secretary of the African Tobacco Control Alliance, which is the regional organization coordinating Africa's tobacco control civil society agenda to promote the FCTC and uh, support uh, member countries to counter and expose the, the tobacco industry. We've worked very closely with ATCA for the past few years, and we are very proud of its achievement and growth under Leon's uh, leadership and vision. Leon, the mic is yours. <laughs> oui. Nice background. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Bintu. Uh, I'm honored uh, to address this gathering to, today uh, to first and foremost uh, say happy anniversary to the Campaign for Tobacco for Kids. Um, for you, for your team from uh, uh, DC and uh, globally, I want to say happy anniversary to you all. We are celebrating today the Africa Day and uh, um, uh, 25th anniversary of uh, the campaign. Uh, you know, 25th anniversary in a life is uh, something that really stands uh, great. So I want to uh, commend the campaign for all this uh, uh, effort globally, but uh, investment in, in Africa. Allow me to say that uh, today, as we celebrate uh, the Africa Day, we celebrate our common heritage. Mm -hmm. And I would like to say that uh, we are not just celebrating the campaign's uh, anniversary today, but uh, also a partnership a friendship, I would say. This is a friendship uh, that has generated the key outcomes. You know, these outcomes uh, have marked the domestication of the WHO uh, Framework Convention for Tobacco Control in Africa. And if today you see the testimonies, you heard them, if we can testify that our continent, uh, you know, um, really have moved in the protection of our people, and the younger ones, such as children in the continent, mm. these uh, as a subject that is now fully taken into account in our, our legislations, I think I would say it is thanks to this friendship. And I would like to say, Bintu, that on behalf of the African Tobacco Control Alliance, uh, on behalf of the entire civil society uh, community in Africa, I appreciate these steps that uh, the campaign has done with us for several years to raise the standard of civil society intervention in tobacco control in Africa, specifically raising the alliance as a communication hub with capacity to monitor, expose, and counter the tobacco industry. Uh, the staff of the Secretariat uh, and uh, uh, the entire community, we all received a big thank you to the campaign. The youth and uh, the children, you know, are the future of Africa. And I would like to reassure the campaign for our commitment, our commitment to your side to create a tobacco-free generation. I mean, a tobacco-free Africa. I wish long life to the campaign for tobacco-free kids and long live Africa. Thank you very much, Bintu. Thank you. Long live Africa. Uh, thank you, Leonce. I, I won't even go into why we love working with you and your team. Um, just know that we are also grateful for your leadership, your trust, and your friendship, as you call it. It is a true one. Uh, I'll, now, I'll now give the floor to uh, two other partners we work very closely with on the ground, whose complementing support to government and civil society have been important uh, to capacity strengthening and evidence-based advocacy. Uh, Bettina, who is with ACBF, the African Capacity Building Foundation based in Harare. Let me start with you. Uh, then Andrea from Development Gateway. Mm, thank you very much, Bintu. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, the ACB of the Africa Capacity Building Foundation started uh, tobacco control initiatives in 2014. And ever since, it has been working with a uh, campaign for tobacco free kids and other partners. Today, ACBF is very proud to be part of this celebration of 25 years of CTFK's existence uh, and achievements. 
The main uh, milestone that we achieved as ACBF working with uh, CTFK was the training that was laid by CTFK in leadership and advocacy. It was done uh, in 2017. The training enhanced the skills and the knowledge of the sub-grantees that we are supporting. And thanks to the CTFK team, which was led by Bintu and other uh, team members and other partners as well. Uh, the training um, also, uh, the results of this training uh, also resulted in the passage or uh, attributed to the um, passage of the strong tobacco control law in Gambia, as well as the signing of uh, five decrees uh, for the implementation of the tobacco control law in uh, Gabon. So these are the two attributes that we can uh, directly uh, link to this training. And thanks again to the CTFK. Another uh, milestone that we also achieved with CTFK and other Gates co-partners was through the meetings that we, we do annually, biannually, where also CTFK was very instrumental uh, for ACBF, that is they recommended ACBF to support countries, uh, to support CSOs in uh, Cote d'Ivoire, as well as in Botswana to compl complement existing uh, initiatives in that country. And that gave birth to Clucode and HPP again, thanks to your uh, influence. So on behalf of ACBF and myself, we wish uh, a CTFK family future success uh, in tobacco control in Africa and worldwide. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bettina. Thank you so much. Andrea? Sure, and congratulations to CTFK as we celebrate the 25th, 25th anniversary. Uh, so my name is Andrea Ulrich, and I'm honored to speak to you today. I'm representing Development Gateway, a data for development nonprofit, and I am the program manager of the Tobacco Control Data Initiative. If I could summarize our experience working with CTFK in three words, I would say they have consistently been brilliant, committed, and enthusiastic. So at our organization, Development Gateway, we build websites that have data and research visualizations. So we're the data nerds. And when we started working on tobacco control in 2019, we knew that we were not the experts, but we needed to talk to the experts to understand what their needs and priorities are in tobacco control in Africa. And the support, the mentorship that CTFK have provided from day one has been invaluable. Whether it's our work in Ethiopia, working with Dereje, our work in South Africa, working with Zanele Matumbu, in Nigeria with Hilda, or at the regional level with Bintu and Melinda, Belinda and many others, uh, we have consistently been impressed with how incredibly knowledgeable, compassionate, and generous the CTFK team is. And in fact, just one quick story to share. One of our first activities in our program was to conduct a series of interviews uh, with stakeholders in tobacco control in South Africa. And myself and other coworkers are in Pretoria interviewing stakeholders. And no matter if we were talking to academics, government, you know, the National Department of Health, other civil society, we kept hearing, you need to speak to Zanelli Mutembu. So she was, you know, the team member in South Africa from the CTFK team, and she was the talk of the town. And I can tell you that sitting down with her and understanding her priorities and the upcoming tobacco control bill, it was a master class in introduction to the field. So since that time, we've developed a dashboard designed around her feedback and others' feedback, and I understand she's referencing that work as she continues her advocacy work. So, and I just wanted to add, beyond being brilliant and engaging, CTFK is also well-organized. I cannot tell you the number of times that Bintu or her team have been prompting us with those action items, getting us organized for the next meeting. It really makes a difference to work with a partner who's so well-organized. 
And then finally, their positivity and enthusiasm. It often is what gets myself and my team through the day. So the fact that you know, you're not just brilliant and engaged, but you're also fun to work with. Um, I just think you couldn't ask for more in a partner. So I know my time is up, uh, but I know our time collaborating with CTFK is not up and we're looking forward to many more years of partnership. Uh, I do not have a fancy drink with me, but I would like to toast with my water bottle. So to CTFK and the whole team. Wow, thank you so much, Andrea. I'll send you the $100 check that I owe you for that message. <laughs> but I really appreciate it. I, yes. I just love working in the same space as, you know, Bettina and you and the other partners under the, you know, the the the, the Bill and Melinda Gates um, Tobacco Control Africa initiative. But here, you know, girl power, girl power. Uh, I, I love having you guys by, you know, CTFK side. It's always great to be with you. Thank you, Bettina, Andrea, Lyons. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate those, those, those words. Um, so we are all did, almost done. Um, before, of course, we close, um, here's a message from Jean Pollen with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, our funder. Sorry, B2. Yes? Sorry. Uh, you know, in, um, in, in Africa, we used to do something, and I think this is globally, that when we celebrate uh, uh, anniversary, we, we, we have a song that uh, says, uh -oh. uh, <laughs> Joyeux anniversary, happy <laughs> birthday to you. We, I suggest we end with that one. Oh my and God. I, have this, I will play with this for you. Oh, your okay. saxophones. Okay, we'll do that at the end. So, then. <laughs> we we'll always, do that. We'll Thank for, you, Leo. For, for the campaign. Maybe we'll bring you to DC so we can do that and we can have a, part, a saxophone party here. <laughs> Thank you, Leo. So I appreciate it. Uh, let's go to um, the message from our funder. What a special occasion. On behalf of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, congratulations CTFK on your 25 year anniversary. We deeply value our partnership with your organization and it has been a pleasure working with your Africa team. Bintu, Sophie, Belinda, Bamba, Zanele, Chaleshe, Hilda, Michael, Dirige, it is an honor to work with all of you. Your expertise, your commitment, your bravery, your political savvy, your kindness and your humanity is so deeply appreciated. We hear consistently from frontline advocates and government officials about how much they value the generous support that CTFK provides. And as you all know, in the last five to 10 years, the African region has been a leader globally in adopting life-saving tobacco control policy. And without the generous, there's no doubt the generous support of CTFK has contributed to that. So to the Africa team and to the full team at headquarters, Yolanda, the ILC, and all those who support you, thank you for all that you do and congratulations. Thank you so much, Jean. Really nice, really nice of her. Uh, we're going to um, give one uh, last uh, message and this one will be from the um, our, our executive vi uh, vice president of global programs, Yolanda Richardson. Yolanda, you have the floor. Thank Your you. So okay, yeah. go ahead. You're good. Thank you so much, Bintu. Um, it's hard not to, you know, sort of have tears of absolute delight um, in having this opportunity to celebrate CTFK's 25 years with all of our partners from Africa. Um, <clears throat> we have, when we started the organization 25 years ago, we started, you know, a fairly small organization um, with a commitment to um, passing laws in the United States where tobacco consumption rates were incredibly high. And because of that sort of success in the United States, we then moved globally. Um, at the time we started the global work, um, Africa was not a significant part of the global programming. 
although our, one of our very first grants did go to an um, African organization um, in 2007 when the um, Global Initiative on Tobacco Control was in fact launched. Um, all of us at the campaign are completely dedicated to the work in Africa. Um, and we, despite the fact that Africa wasn't central to the initial global work, we always were there to make ourselves available, certainly in terms of technical support, but also financial support to the incredible uh, groups on the ground. What is um, sort of, I think, essential about, I think, um, the work at CTFK and the work with all of these partners is we really do have as a core value two things, which I think are exemplified in today's conversation. The first is the importance of celebration. And that's what this been, has been to today. The fights have been hard, they've been difficult, they've been far longer than we would have wanted um, for them to be. But it's so important to stop and celebrate when good work is done, when advocates have led with, with passion um, and dedication. And so I'm just so pleased that we are able to be here with you today to really uh, imbibe that core value of the, of the campaign. The other core value of the campaign is collaboration. Everything we do um, is in the spirit of collaboration, whether it's the headquarter teams working across discipline, whether it's our relationship with you know, partners um, in the countries and the regions where we work, or even collaboratively working with governments when they are so inclined to do so. So that's a hallmark of how we think about the work. And I just wanna say, I am so gratified to have had this opportunity um, to be a part of the campaign's global program nearly since its inception, but not completely so. The true, um, we have just watched Africa make policy progress across the entire region. We've delighted to be there on, with some of that progress, but often delighted to just see that, that progress happens often without um, CTFK's involvement. We are so delighted by the vibrancy that's in the movement now. It's just, just so heartwarming to see um, how many people here um, have been in the mo movement for a very long time, but also to see so many new faces. And I won't call out names because I'll probably forget some, but they, you know, when I got on the call today, I just started smiling <laughs> because I saw so many old friends and, and colleagues. So um, my heart goes out to, to all of you for that. But I've been able to witness real courage. And a couple of the speakers alluded to that. Um, you know, the tobacco industry is no small foe, as we all know, and, you know, has incredible resources and um, an incredible influence. But to watch, you know, country after country, advocate group, advocacy group after advocacy group stand up to the tobacco industry is nothing short of Herculean, really. Um, Kenya and Uganda, you know, not letting BAT bully them when they tried to sue um, Cameroon saying, we're going to pass something in Cameroon if it kills us and we're going to get those graphic health warnings done, um, come hell or high water. You know, South Africa continuing to fight through years and years and years of trying to improve their law. There are just so many stories of just unending courage and dedication um, that I can only um, end with a statement of complete, total humility and gratitude mm. to the work of everybody who has brought us here to this day from this region and a real sense of optimism for the future um, that is tobacco control in the region. Um, we know that it is in incredibly good hands. We stand continually ready to be your partners. I can't uh, stop by giving a real shout out to the team. Um, I can do that. <laughs> Um, and and that, that that's all the people that you know Jean mentioned in 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 her um, in her really kind remarks. Um, bentu has been our incredible leader uh, for the fat past several years, but it's really a team effort. All the folks at headquarters um, are sort of uh, I want to say our special sort of you know um, leader and Patricia Lambert, who you know I remember when I first came here, she said we are going to work in Africa. <laughs> That goes without saying. So no matter what the priority of the Gates Initiative it was, we were going to make sure we continue to do work in Africa. So all the teams on the ground, um, you know, um, Hilda and Bamba and Dereje and Belinda and Zanelli and Chileche uh, and Michael, all just phenomenal. Um, and just such a delight to have them as partners. Um, so a huge thank you to everybody um, at headquarters and in the field. Um, and I just want to say I, I part deeply, deeply thankful and with sincere gratitude for the partnership. Thank you.
Thank you, Yolanda. I think you took words um, out of my mouth. Uh, but thank you very much for also you, your, your leadership. Uh, we all know that, that Africa holds a very special place in your heart. Um, the team knows that and everybody who knows you knows that. Um, and you've always been so close to, to this work and have masterminded along with, you've mentioned Patri Patri uh, Pat Patricia Lambert, great, great ideas that led to memorable campaign successes. So thank you and kudos to you as well. Okay, we are uh, officially very, very late. Um, this concludes our event. Thank you all for sharing your journeys and your thoughts. Thank you for hanging out with us uh, over time. Uh, we may be gathering for our, our anniversary, but truthfully, this event is really to celebrate the progress made in tobacco control policy and to tell you, please don't stop. We can still do this all together. Uh, but we also want to thank the great partners we have, such as the African Capacity Building Foundation, the um, African uh, Tobacco Control Alliance, the CDC, the CDC Foundation, Development Gateway, Management Sciences for Health, Tax Justice Network, um, Africa, WHO Afro, FCA, um, and, um, um, and uh, uh, the FCTC 2030. Oh my God, great colleagues. Um, we've been fully committed to support this work and we are honored to be your continued trusted partner in this journey. And we won't cease to be, as Yolanda says, as long as we can do it, and we are forever uh, grateful to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for allowing us to do this so far. Um, a big, big, big shout out for my incredible CTFK team in Africa, who are more brothers and sisters to me. Uh, we work hard and we play hard when we're together after successes. Um, and another one, uh, a huge, huge thank you to the amazing, incredible HQ team uh, that supports us as well to make this happen. Last word, change is possible. Poss policy change works. Advocacy works, you said that, Bode. Uh, and speaking up works. We all prove that with passionate advocacy, we can defeat the biggest of foes. So visit our website, please, tobaccofreekids.org to learn more about our current work around the world. Uh, great, um, um, useful material. And you, we leave you now with another song in uh, support of tobacco control, this time from Nigeria. Um, uh, Leons, I will have to schedule a meeting for the team with you and your saxophone. Um, so this song is a winning product of a youth rap challenge conducted in 2019 by Bude's group, the Environmental Rights Action then. Uh, the competition was created to raise awareness on the enforcement of uh, the National Tobacco Control Act and to push for the immediate adoption of its regulation and to motivate youth to further spread the anti-tobacco youth campaign. The song is performed by Reflex. Please enjoy a Happy Africa Day. It was great to have you here with us. We love working with you. Good luck with everything and see you soon, I hope. Thank you. Say them they ball but not negligence oh, yeah. Tobacco plenty for market Information day for the packet Them say you go quick kicky pocket All man still buy fully pocket Oh yeah, make with them So them go no Anytime where you they smoke it, they kill you, you so oh, na, na, na. Tobacco body They scatter body I beg you no follow the hypo Save your money oh, 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 yeah. Avoid the tobacco yeah. Make it collab Follow me, they put hand do. Yeah. Now them say you no know good do. Yeah. Avoid the tobacco. Yeah. Make me collab. Yeah. Follow me, they put hand do. Yeah. Now them say you no know good do. Dangerous to the smoker and the smoky. Be the cause cancer for the body. But them using media promote them like say the thing they good for body. Oh, no. We need to control. Oh, no. Enforce the tobacco control. Oh, no. We need to control. Oh, no. See guys, suppose get the control. Oh, yeah, follow me campaign. Stop to the retail. Make our children no inhale. Tobacco is spoiling their brain. Addiction, addiction. It the kill next generation. Addiction, addiction. Make we take action, no. Avoid the tobacco. Yeah. Make we collab. Yeah. Follow me, they put hand do. Yeah. Tell them say you no know good do. Yeah. Avoid the tobacco. Yeah. Make we collab. Yeah. Follow me, they put hand do. Yeah. Tell them say you no know good do.
shot in your life, no go destroy your future. Cause you want you to back up boost us. Don't say one by one, find one more day on that thing. It is still a guy, they are too small. Let me fuck up, Raku. Oh, no, Shaki, be the Taju, Taju, you go pound with Lola, Oja, Laju, Laju. Cause you watch out for me, they are dozen approved, so you good. Cancer of the lungs, it's not thing you go get. Infection of the blood, you go get. Infection of the gum, you go get. Bubunya, you know my dear, I know my dance. Reduction in fertility, you go get. Blindness for the stroke, you go get. Save your life, go pay for the like a jet. Say no to tobacco, call your jet. Make you no regret. Avoid the tobacco, yeah. Make we call a bow, yeah. Follow me, they put hand door, yeah. Tell them say you no know good, oh, yeah. Avoid the tobacco, yeah. Make we call a bow, yeah. Follow me, they put hand door, yeah. Tell them say you no know good, oh, yeah. Mixing.